Hi fam, today I'm gonna go over how to change mom's oil in the Subaru and top off the fluids. First, we gotta get the tools and the tools are in the shed. All right, the only tools you really need for this is the socket and ratchet set, which I keep right here or sometimes tucked in under here. So grab this big guy and then you also need the filter wrench, which I keep right in the carport. The rest of the things we'll need are right here. So we'll grab the rags, we'll need the ramps. And the funnels. And like I said, the filter wrench, I usually keep in this big dirty funnel and it's this smaller one um, that is for mom's car. And then we'll use this after to help clean our hands. All right, then I just set the tools that I'm gonna use right up here on the fridge. Go ahead and open this guy up real quick. And then you can use this pad to set things on. All right, now I'll start up the car and get ready to drive it up on those ramps. All right, getting in the car here, I'm gonna back it up and I'm gonna just leave it running. Um, and the reason why is because you always wanna change a car when the oil is warm or hot. Uh, if, you, if you don't let it get warm or hot, uh, the old dirty oil will be stuck all up inside the engine. All right, and the way that you can tell when the car is hot is by using the temperature gauge, right? So it'll be right there in the middle. It'll come up off the cold and go into the middle right there. And that's how you tell when the car is nice and warm. All right, I'm just gonna leave it running for a minute while I position the ramps. All right, car's still running and you can see I positioned the ramps right up against the two tires with the tires right in the center. Oh, this one's just a little off center. There we go. And uh, it might help to have a spotter here so you don't drive over the ramps uh, as you go up. One more thing to remember as you go up to drive on the ramps here, I put the car in drive here, um, is you have to turn off the front collision avoidance up here. You have to press that off, otherwise the car literally won't let you drive up on the ramps. See, it's obstacle detected, so it won't let you. So you have to turn this guy off. Oh, I think you have to hold it for a second. There you go. Now it's off. And now I should be able to drive up onto the ramps. Yep, nice and easy. All right, and then we're gonna make sure we're in park and also set the parking brake. Okay, parking brake set. Uh, and then the last thing I'll go ahead and do while I'm here is reach underneath here, pull that little latch right there to pop the hood and turn the vehicle off. And then to release the hood, we're gonna come up here, right here. So you see right above the Subaru emblem, there's this little latch right there. That's how we're gonna push over. Sorry, doing this with one hand. To release the hood. And then you need to use the prop rod and place it in the hole right there. Now we are cooking with fire. All right, um, then we're gonna remove our watch and ring because if you ever get used oil in those, the smell will never come out. All right, watch and ring are off. Next step, right before we drain the oil, is we're gonna come over here and we're gonna remove the engine oil filler cap. That way the oil flows freely down into the drain pan. And then I don't think, and I'll set that right here with our stuff. And I don't think you have to do this but I always unseat the dipstick too. So this is the engine oil dipstick you see right there. And I'll unseat that just so there's a little bit more air. It'll help that engine oil flow down in the drain pan. All right, so this is the drain pan. Different from the drain tank, the used oil tank, right? And I'll make sure that's good and empty for you before I leave. Uh, but we'll go ahead and we'll slide our drain pan in. And we got our creeper ready. And then to remove the oil drain plug, we're gonna use our 3 8 inch drive ratchet. 
in our 17 millimeter socket, okay? You just check and make sure they're in the right place. Yep, that's the 17 millimeter. This is a Japanese car, so everything's metric on it. And uh, I don't think you need an extension for this one, but like, you know what? Better to have it to get underneath the car anyway, so I'll grab the extension here. I'll put the socket on the extension and attach the extension to the ratchet. And then you just gotta check which way it's spinning right now, right? So right now, it is tightening. So I take my ratchet and I'll flip it to loosen. Lefty Lucy. All right, we're ready to go. All right, so I got some rags, my ratchet. I'm gonna get down on this creeper here. And slide underneath the vehicle. So this very first hole that you come to underneath the car, this very first one right here, this is where we're gonna be working today. So we're gonna come up underneath here and this black plug right here is your oil drain plug, all right? And I always tighten it just right. So we make sure it's never too loose, never too tight. Uh, and because you can damage it if you put it on too tight. All right, so I get my ratchet here. And the first thing I'm gonna do with this is I'm just gonna break the torque on it. All right, so I got my ratchet under that. That extension is helpful. So we'll use the extension and should be able to get this with one hand. All right, so I broke the torque on it. So now it can spin freely. And that is a chicken. Get out of here, chicken. Go. Go. I don't need your help. All right, so uh, the, the drain plug will be a little hot. And it's also, it's just going to make a little bit of a mess, right? There's going to be some oil that splashes up here and a little bit that splashes up here. So we just cleaned it up really good. But now, as you can see, all I did was break the torque and I can spin. I don't know if I have enough light, but you can spin this with your fingers now. I'm spinning it with my fingers, right? So I'm gonna get a rag and I'm just gonna spin it off my fingers. I'm gonna be very careful not to drop it into the drain pan that's pre-positioned underneath because that's gonna be a mess. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start loosening that guy up now. As I'm doing this, I'm uh, holding pressure on the plug with my hand. And when I feel it good and loose, I'm just gonna remove it. And the oil is gonna go right into the pan like that. And as you can see, Really not a good way to keep your hand clean while that's happening. Um, but you do want to move the, as the stream gets a little shorter, you want to move the tray to make sure it remains underneath so we don't drip oil on mom's nice clean driveway. And then I'm just going to grab, so I'm holding the drain plug in my hand, I'm just going to grab a rag and wipe my hand off while this uh, oil drains out. All right, car's still draining. I got the plug all cleaned off. And what we're gonna, another thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna remove this. This is a crushable metal gasket. And we're gonna change that every single time we change the oil. I already have one for you. So this is gonna be trash, this old one. This plug is obviously not trash. So we're gonna keep that and I'll put that over here with the oil filler cap, right? So the old gasket is trash. Every single time uh, we change the oil, we get a new one. Order direct from Subaru. And there's one of our new ones. And our brand new Subaru oil filter that we're gonna change as well. All right, next thing we're gonna do is remove the old oil filter. So we're gonna take that 17 millimeter socket off. We'll set it back where it goes. Grab the filter wrench and uh, stick that bad Johnny on there on the end of our extension right here. All right, now you can um, get this stuck on the filter. So there's a little method to the way you put it on. You take it and you make sure it fits really good and then put it on there, right? Just like that. Okay, now we're ready to start loosening it. Oh, see, it's starting to slip right. already. Because it was starting to slip, a trick that you can do is you put the rag on top of the filter like that. 
and then you're just going to kind of get it on there real good and the rag, rag's just going to make it a little bit tighter right now it's not slipping anymore i don't know if you can see it but the whole filter is actually turning One more trick that you want to do, especially if you have to wedge it on there like that, is as soon as you get it loose, break this back off, right? Because what you don't want to have is the engine oil filter be stuck on this um, outside of the car. But now, as you can see, I can move the engine oil filter and I'll just continue to unscrew that all the way. Um, there's going to be a little bit of oil that comes out of this when we lift it off. So we will do that right over this tray right here. Okay, got it. And there's my old filter. I'm not too worried about you confusing the old filter with the new filter, but just in case you can take your old crushable gasket and your old filter and just set them on these rags on the ground next to the old drain right. tank. Now we're gonna get ready to fill the new oil. This step is very, very, very important, so you can't skip it. See how dirty this funnel is? It needs to be thoroughly cleaned. All right, so we're gonna wipe out the entire inside with a brand new clean rag, really good. And then even after we do that, I'm gonna shove this rag all the way through the funnel and pull it through a few times to make sure there's no particles um, that go into mom, mom's new engine. So I'll pull it all the way out. I need two inches. Right. Filter is spick and span, outside and in, and we can go ahead and, uh, this is another part where you gotta do a little bit of wedge in here. So we're gonna, you're gonna have to kinda smash the filter because of this big vacuum line right here. All right, so you smash the, not filter, the funnel, and get it to set in there good, and you're probably gonna have to hold it with one hand as you pour, okay? But before we fill anything, we're gonna need to reinstall our new drain plug with our brand new crushable gasket. Now, as you can see on the gasket here, once it comes into focus, come on. there we go. There's a flat side and a kind of beveled side, right? We're gonna put the flat side, we're gonna put the flat side first onto the plug, right? so that the beveled side is kind of sticking up. So it should look just like that. You got the flat side down against the plug and the bevel side's kind of sticking up. All right, back on the creeper, I got my drain plug and I have my socket with me ready to go. We're gonna roll under here. And as you can see now, the oil has slowed to just a drip, which is good enough. Okay, I'm going to take this drain plug and just put it right back in the hole right there and install it by hand until it's hand tight. And you can see, like I said, there's a little bit of oil splash around. We'll make sure we got good and clean before we are done here. Grab my ratchet. I'm going to switch the drive to tightening. I'm going to stick it on there. And we're going to go just about that tight. That's it, right? I'm not gonna keep twisting and torquing on it. That is plenty good enough. And like I said, you can damage uh, both the drain pan and the plug by over tightening. I'm gonna go get a rag and just clean it up and then slide that through. All right, very important that we always put the right type of oil in. As you can see, we got some Zero W20 here. Um, Sometimes people put the filter in right now because you do have to um, get a little bit of fresh, brand new oil in your finger. So what you would do is open up the oil, remove this seal here, and then you need to rub this fresh coat of oil on the gasket. And the reason why you do that is the gasket slides as you install it and it doesn't pinch and um, bunch up and create an oil leak. The reason why I don't put the oil filter on first, again, is because of where it sits right here, and we'll clean up this tray before we uh, install it, and where you need to fill. So if you put the um, filter on first, uh, it's just kind of more in the way of your funnel and makes it even harder to fill. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fill first with the proper amount of oil, and then we will 
uh, put, clean up the filter tray and install the new filter. All right, gonna go ahead and open this sucker up now. I'm gonna carefully peel this off. I wanna make sure I don't get any of this foil um, down in there and accidentally pour it into the engine. So I peel off the entire foil, just like that. Put that in my little trash pile right here. And then, like I said, I'm gonna get some fresh, clean oil on my finger right here. And I'm just gonna lubricate this gasket up and you get it all completely covered with brand new oil because you don't want it to pinch. You want it to make a nice, good seal. So important to get it good and on there. All right, and the reason why I'm doing this now is because I'm about to dump almost all of this into the car. The oil capacity on a Subaru Ascent is 4.8 quarts. Let me see if we can see here. All right, so we got quarts and liters. This is five quarts, so it's almost the whole thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to service, um, pour it in here, and then we'll go ahead, um, crank it up, check for oil, for leaks, and then we'll wait five minutes and check the dipstick. Um, but you can use almost all of this. I mean, you're literally 0.2 quarts uh, that you're not going to use, so it's not very much that you're not going to use, just a little bit left in the bottom of the thing. All right. And when you're pouring the oil, um, it's very important to just be patient. If you try to hurry, you're going to make a mess in the engine bay. And that's not what we want here. So I'm just tipping this thing over. And I'm just going to go nice and slow. And fill this thing up. I'm not going to try to rest this thing on anything. When you do that, that's usually when it will slip and you'll spill all over the engine bay, making a big old mess. So we're just gonna slowly fill this thing up. And like I said, I'm gonna use almost all of it before I uh, crank it up, check for leaks, and then uh, top it off if it needs it. Being how this is like the seventh time I've changed the oil on this vehicle, I know kind of exactly when to stop. So. I'll go ahead and do that. Now that I'm done servicing, I'm gonna remove the filter from my little wedge job in there. Make sure it's not dripping all over the place. And I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna set it on this semi-clean towel just in case we have to add more oil. All right, and then like I said, I'm gonna clean up this filter tray um, just by using a nice clean rag. Get it spick and span. Um, if you don't, Get it clean in there. Engine dust and grime and gunk will uh, build up on that wet oil and it'll just start looking like shit. So we're gonna get that all cleaned up. All right, good to go. Nice and clean. We got our new filter that has oil all over that gasket there. And we're gonna install this hand tight, okay? But it needs to be like dad hand tight, not Julie hand tight. So after you get it tight, about right there, right? Not torquing too much on that either. Just clean it. Um, your, if your hands are slippery, it's going to be a little harder. But yeah, that's perfect right there. All right. And then the last thing we'll do, uh, for now anyways, before we start it up and let it run for a second, is reinstall the oil filler cap. And reseat that dipstick. All right, filler caps on, dipsticks reseated. Now we can start the car up and check for these. I didn't mention this, but make sure that your hands are clean before you go in mom's car uh, and start it, which I did, promise. All right, the car's running, and while the car's running, don't even really need to get back down on the creeper. I'm just gonna get under here and just make sure that nothing's leaking up under there um, where we are working. All right, 
No leaks, looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and let it run for a couple minutes and let the oil get hot. I'll back it down off the ramps and then we'll check the oil level and make sure we're done. And then the last thing I'll teach you how to do is reset the, uh, the oil timer in the car so that it tells you when it's ready to go. And then cleaning up, we'll take that, we'll use our funnel and we'll dump it into this so that we can go recycle the oil. All right. All right, one of the things you can do while you're uh, waiting for the car to heat back up so you can check the oil level is uh, reset the oil reminder thing. So you just go through the menu until you get to this page right here that says press and hold view to access setting screen. So we're gonna press and hold view. When we get there, we're gonna go down to, or, yeah, down to maintenance, or press view. We'll press engine oil, and then we're gonna reset it to 6,000 miles. So there's our miles, and we'll change it to, oh, nope, that's a date. Okay, so select miles by hitting the view button and we're gonna take it to 6,000 miles. Okay, 6,000 miles. Once it's on 6,000, you press view. And then you take it over to set. Setting complete. Okay, and then we'll just do the same for oil filter. I always change them both at the same time, but I guess you don't have to. Take it over to 6,000 miles. Set. Setting complete. Okay, and then you just gotta go down to go back to get out of this menu. Go back. All right. Cool. And then you're just back to the regular car menu. You can put it on whatever mom likes to have on there, which I think is that one usually. Distance to empty. Cool. We're gonna turn off the vehicle and we are going to wait five minutes uh, for the oil to drain back into the sump and then we'll check the oil level. While we're waiting, that's usually the time when I go ahead and clean up all of this stuff. I won't drain the oil just in case I need to add more with that clean filter, um, but I will go ahead and put all the tools away and uh, put the ramps away because we know we're done with that. We know the car's not leaking and uh, we're not gonna use the creeper or any of the tools anymore uh, now that we know that. All right, now that it's been five minutes, we're gonna go ahead and check the oil level with a nice clean rag. The dipstick out. I'm gonna wipe it down. After the engine's been running, you have to wipe it before you check it. I'm gonna put it back in. Fully seat it. And then take it out and take a look. And I don't know if you'll be able to see on the camera, but it's not, but really there's two dots there, right? And it's in between those two dots, it's good to go. Um, and it, since it's clean oil, you gotta kinda gotta look real hard and kinda move it around in the light to get the proper reflection to see where it's at. All right, but the oil level's good to go. And that is, the oil change. The last thing we'll do is slowly we'll remove this cap. We'll use our uh, funnel. Open this valve and slowly pour the oil into the old oil tank. All right, valves open. Draining the drain pan into the old oil tank.